Story break. Today we are reading Eleanor and Violet, the story of two naughty chickens by Patty Belling Murphy. Eleanor was just a little bit naughty. She wrote on the walls, but in tiny, tiny letters where no one could see it. She took her sister's things and hid them in her room, but only their not so special things. She talked back to her mother, but not out loud. Sometimes she sang bad words softly under her breath in the bathroom. Although she tried to be good some of the time, she kind of liked being naughty. One day, Eleanor took her babies for a walk and met a little girl who had come to stay with her grandmother. Her name was Violet, and she was very naughty. She wrote on the walls with her special indelible markers. She talked back to everyone. She sang bad words very loudly while walking down the street. She's even naughtier than Eleanor, said Eleanor's sisters. We don't like her. I do, said Eleanor. Violet and Eleanor played together every day that week. They thought of many naughty things to do, like leaving the water running in the bathtub to see how long it would take to run out under the door. You don't have to go when your mother calls you, Violet said. Just don't answer. Eleanor was impressed. She tried it. Eleanor spent more and more time in the timeout corner. On Saturday, Violet's last day at her grandmother's house, Eleanor's Aunt Lucy came to visit on her way home from her trip around the world. She was everyone's favorite, especially Eleanor's. Aunt Lucy wore fabulous clothes, and she always took Eleanor and her sisters out to tea and let them eat all the sandwiches and cakes they wanted. Are we going out to tea? Eleanor asked. Can my new friend Violet come with us? Please, please, please. Yes, but we won't be going out for at least an hour. With that, Aunt Lucy disappeared into the kitchen to chat with Eleanor's mother. How about we pretend we're evil pirates and bury lots of treasure, Violet said, and will Pinky swear not to tell where it is? Yes, yes, Eleanor replied. They gathered up pieces of treasure and hid them in nooks and crannies all over the house. Now we just need one more special treasure, said Violet, eyeing Aunt Lucy's purse. Oh, no, I don't think that's such a good idea, said Eleanor. That belongs to Aunt Lucy, and we shouldn't touch it. Poo poo, said Violet, gathering up the purse. Eleanor followed her quietly up the stairs. After hiding the treasure, the girls sang sea shanties and made Eleanor's sister's dolls walk the plank. As the very last doll fell screaming into the ocean, they heard closet doors opening and shutting and Aunt Lucy sighing. After much banging and crashing, Aunt Lucy appeared in the doorway. Has anyone seen my purse, she asked. We can't go out to tea until we find it. My car keys and money are all in it. No, said Eleanor, not daring to look up. Are you sure, Aunt Lucy said, it's filled with presents from my trip. Eleanor looked at Violet. Violet wiggled her pinky at Eleanor and whispered, Pinky swear. Eleanor's sister scowled at them and their dolls scattered all over the floor. Now you've done it, Eleanor, they said. Now we can't go out to tea. Eleanor did not know what to do. She looked from Aunt Lucy to Violet. She looked up and she looked down. Then she knew. It's buried treasure, Eleanor squeaked. We'll find it, we'll find it, she promised and dragged Violet upstairs to look. When the girls brought the purse downstairs, Eleanor's mother, Aunt Lucy, and Eleanor's sisters were all waiting. Eleanor just looked at Aunt Lucy and began to sob. I'm sorry, Aunt Lucy, she said. Me too, said Violet. Oh, Eleanor, Aunt Lucy said. Everyone's naughty sometimes. Once, your mom and I put salt in the sugar bowl when our piano teacher was coming to visit. Now let's go to tea. They all had a marvelous time eating little cakes with pink frosting and tiny sugar spun roses. Eleanor was careful to sit up very straight and to say please and thank you and was only a little naughty at the very end when she slipped some sugar cubes into her pocket. Violet only blew bubbles in her tea once and did not take even one sugar cube. Later that day, Violet walked over to Eleanor's house to say goodbye. She gave Eleanor one of her special indelible markers and her address. Guess what, said Violet, next year I'll be at Grandma's for the whole summer. Eleanor hugged Violet goodbye and secretly slipped a sugar cube into her pocket. Phew, said Eleanor's mother as she tucked her into bed that night. I must say, I'm glad that's over. Eleanor just smiled. The end. Thanks for listening. Bye.